Darren James. Leonard James Promotions. Net. How cruise ship food is made Multiple stories of cruise ship disasters may leave you hesitant to book a cruise, however, it is still a vacation of choice for many people. If you are conscious about your health or weight, though, another cruise ship disaster might be the around-the-clock food that is often a featured attraction on many cruise ships. You can still eat for good health while on a cruise by following a few simple guidelines. To be sure you eat for good health, stick to your regular routine as much as possible. Just because food is available 24-7 does not mean you have to dine at every time and place food is available. If you normally eat three meals a day, keep the same schedule while on the ship and avoid adding excess calories between meals. Be conscious of how food is prepared. To make meals more appetizing chefs add a lot of butter, oils, salt and other things you may not use when cooking at home. To eat for good health it is best to eat dishes with as little additional preparation as possible. Fill up on salad and soup to minimize how much of the main course you need to be satisfied. This trick only works if you choose broth soups, not cream soups, and are careful with the high-fat, high-calorie salad toppings such as croutons, cheese, bacon, and salad dressings. Stay away from the appetizers before dinner, as you can pack on hundreds of calories in a few bites of appetizers. Save your calories for something more enjoyable and filling at dinner. As the name implies, appetizers will also whet your appetite, causing you to eat even more at dinner than you would otherwise. When dining at a buffet do your best to review the entire buffet offerings first to get an idea of which selections would make the healthiest menu options. That way when you go through the buffet line you will be able to plan your meal around the best protein and complex carbohydrate selections. Don't worry, you will get plenty of fat. If they do offer any good fats such as fish, avocados or walnuts, that would be a good choice, unless the fish is fried. Be sure to eat enough protein, as this will help fill you up and keep you satisfied until the next meal. Then, fill your plate with vegetables as close to their natural state as possible. If you are lucky enough to have raw vegetables use hummus or guacamole as a dip instead of ranch dressing. You will benefit from the protein in humus and the good fat in guacamole, and the fiber in the raw vegetables. Once you are through the buffet line, move away and eat your dinner as far away as possible from the buffet table. This will eliminate the temptation to get another helping of that oh-so-yummy casserole that is oozing in high-fat cream sauce. And of course avoid the temptation of the dessert table. One area to be especially aware of is hidden calories in beverages. Avoid all soda and sweetened beverages, and watch the fruit smoothies, they are loaded with sugar. Also, drinking sugary beverages actually makes you thirstier, rather than quenching your thirst. If you drink alcohol the best drinks are wine or tequila, without any mixer. Most alcohols are low in calories, it's the mixers, soda, tonic, etc., that add the sugar and calories. In addition to being conscious of your food choices, plenty of physical activity will help to work off those extra calories that you can't avoid. Take advantage of the on-ship gym or some off-ship excursions to get in some exercise while having fun. These guidelines on how to eat for good health will ensure that your health and weight will not be a cruise ship disaster. Another cause of weight gain, however, is stress, so whatever you do, remember that you are on vacation and don't stress over every calorie. If you do give in and indulge one day, just get back on track the next day and eat for good health as much as you can. If you are about to get married, then you most possibly will be pondering about where to go for that dream honeymoon you have always been romanticizing about. Should you go to the Caribbean, the Mexican Riviera, some gorgeously beautiful but desolate Pacific island, to Venice? Agreed. Any of those might be a great choice and have the possibility of making you deliriously happy. But have you missed considering one other option? How about having a honeymoon on the cruise ship? Yes, a honeymoon on the ship itself and not just at any destination. Most soon-to-be couples may have seen a cruise ship as just a means of transport. Something that gets you from point A to point B while you enjoy all the amenities on board. Many may somehow believe that most of the fun is to be had at the destinations and not on the ship itself. 
But does that have to be that way? Modern cruise ships are floating miracles. They are overflowing with every conceivable amenity that can delight you. And to say that they provide cozy and comfortable accommodation is an understatement. And the food on board may be better than what you can get at many restaurants on shore. Another thing that may have deterred potential honeymooners from considering a cruise may be the cost. If so, you might want to take into account the length of the cruise while comparing costs. If a two-week cruise sounds very expensive, what would it cost you to go on a two-week vacation on land? And considering all the attractions on board a cruise ship and also at the destinations, would you have a similar experience on a more conventional vacation? Some important questions. That said, while going on a cruise vacation to celebrate your honeymoon may be a good idea, you might not want to board just about any cruise ship and sail away in the direction of the rising or setting sun. You see, some cruise ships target certain types of people only, families, seniors, adventure lovers and so on. What you really require on a honeymoon is that atmosphere that gives you plenty of room to be amorous, an atmosphere that allows romance to flourish. And if there are kids running all over the place or people partying till early morning, then you possibly might find the experience a bit off-putting. Which is why you will want to do some research on the vessel that you plan to be sailing on. What type of people seem to choose it most? What is their age group? What will the atmosphere be like on the cruise ship? And so on. All you would have to do maybe visit several forums and see what people who have already been on the ship are saying about the experience. You might also want to consult a travel agent who has been in the business for a while and knows about the ship and the destinations. If you've never cruised before, the choices can be overwhelming. Do I go with the cruise ship with the rock climbing wall, or the one that has an all-you-can-drink package, oh, or how about the one which has an adults-only area? Choosing a cruise vacation should not be this tough, sigh. Each cruise line and ship has distinctive features and amenities that can create an endless set of options and debate. But, almost all cruise ships have a common set features and options. We've boiled all of the features down for you, the first time cruiser. Here is the nitty gritty on what you can expect. Food and drinks. Asterisk fine gourmet dining every night. Other options, room service available 24-7, lunch and dinner buffets. For an added cost, high-end specialty restaurants. Asterisk one or two formal nights, where passengers dress up for dinner. You can always skip and do the buffet. Asterisk as much coffee, tea, water as you can drink. Sodas and alcoholic beverages are extra. Accommodations. Asterisk cabins, from cheapest to most expensive, interior, no window, ocean view, balcony, suite bigger room with balcony. Asterisk internet and phone access is available, careful, it's pricey. Onboard. Asterisk spa and gym, wellness center for working out, exercise classes, massage, manicure, jacuzzi. Asterisk kids programs, they take the kids away, any questions? Asterisk nightly entertainment, comedy and Vegas, Broadway style shows. Asterisk pools and deck space for laying out and tanning asterisk casino gaming, so you can make back what you spent on drinks the previous night smiley face. Ports of call. Asterisk typically the ship docks in early in the morning, giving you all day at the destination. Asterisk cruise lines arrange various shore excursions for an additional cost. Don't forget, you have the option to explore on your own. Other tips. Asterisk friendly staff from all over the world. Don't be shy about asking questions. Asterisk save some money for tips, typically give at the end of the trip $10 minus 15 per days is fine. Asterisk read the daily newsletter, there's stuff going on every day. E.g. lectures, cooking classes, gym classes. Asterisk you'll find all ages on cruises, young couples, older couples, families, kids, singles. With 2,000 to 5,000 passengers in each ship, there is a good chance to meet other people like you. You can use our site to meet others going on your cruise. So, while the myriad choices can be intimidating, you can count on going through the above on most of the major cruise lines. Don't fret the decision too much. 
Take the plunge, chances are you'll have a blast. First or main sitting started between 6 o'clock p and 6.30 p, second or late sitting started between 8 o'clock p and 8.30 p. One could linger over dinner for up to two hours or more, before being shooed out so tables could be cleared and reset for the next sitting. One sat at the same table at the same time with the same waiter and bus person night after night. And all was well with the world. This was the way the cruise gods intended it, every evening a near-religious gastronomic experience. Then along came the heretics at Norwegian cruise lines with freestyle dining. About the same time along came the unholy sacrilege called, alternative restaurants, at extra cost no less, making the constitutionally mandated separation of church and state complete. And guess what? A large segment of cruise passengers love the new options, so many in fact that all cruise ships are beginning to offer some variation on these new dining choices. Read on to learn. How to select meal times freestyle or fixed. How to book alternative restaurants How to work with the maitre d' How to get the best table How to select meal times Get out your GPS Begin your 12-step program Create a spreadsheet Consult your astrologer Slip the maitre d' a $50 bill Then throw a dart at a seating chart If this seems like too much work for you Just do what we do when we can't agree on when or where to dine Put on your cleanest tank top, slip into your designer flip-flops and head for the Lido buffet. But if it is up to me, dot and it rarely is. I prefer the fixed late sitting. Why, you ask? Late sitting is best because you don't feel rushed to dress for dinner, especially after returning from that exhausting, day-long glass-bottomed taxi ride and lizard roast. And furthermore, it is enjoyable having the same waiter each night. They quickly learn one's preferences and taste inclinations. By the third or fourth day of the cruise they are analogous to mind readers. My experience, cruise ship waiters have the uncanny ability to know exactly what I want before I know myself. Plus, it is a singular thrill to have my personal monogrammed LL. Bean lobster bib folded neatly atop my place setting, ready to strap on each and every evening when I make my grand entrance into the dining room. Freestyle or fixed? Dash. Obviously for me it is fixed, see above, but many prefer a system named after an Olympic swimming event. Why, I don't know. It is not really free, nor is it stylish. You just have a bunch of people wandering aimlessly around the ship from dining room to restaurant to dining room trying to decide where, when and with whom to eat. Why not make that decision once and be done with it? The very thought of having to go through that excruciating process each and every night gives me indigestion. Each cruise line has been rolling out a flexible dining option under its own unique moniker. Norwegian Cruise Lines originated the innovation calling it freestyle dining. Carnival and Royal Caribbean were late to the party but called their processes the Your Choice Dining Program and the My Time Dining Program, respectively. Princess jumped in somewhere in the middle with personal choice dining. Not to be left out, Holland America has introduced, as you wish, dining. Enough with the clever names already. I'm getting heartburn. How to book alternative restaurants. Okay, admittedly, it is nice to book an alternative or specialty restaurant once or twice during the cruise. For a surcharge of $20 to $30 per person it is possible to dine in a venue so upscale that, were it shoreside, probably wouldn't let someone like me in the door, much less think I could afford the experience. The economics are simple. For this relatively paltry surcharge one dines in exquisite splendor. The cost would be at least $100 per person in an establishment of similar quality and opulence back home in Walla Walla. Be sure to make reservations for these upscale gastronomic pleasure palaces immediately upon boarding the ship. They sell out quickly, especially on formal nights. If you are fortunate enough to be camped out in a concierge class, suite or high-end balcony cabin, a butler may be available to handle alternative restaurant reservations on your behalf. If Jeeves isn't available, march down to the front office or call the restaurant directly from your cabin. On some ships with in-cabin interactive video screens you can make reservations just by learning to point the remote control in the right direction. 
How to work with the maitre d. There are far more possibilities here than just getting a table for two by the window. Two items are far more important than table location. Your dining table companions for the cruise the personalities and extracurricular talents of your wait staff large tables for eight or more tend to be livelier and more likely to be seated with a few outgoing eccentrics. This can make for some very entertaining evenings, oftentimes a better show than anything happening in the main showroom. If, after the first couple of nights, your assigned table mates don't seem to have much potential, or appear to be always whacked out on Dramamine, tell the maitre d' you'd like to be traded to another team. He will most likely be glad to oblige. And here is the mother of all hot tips, worth every penny you paid to access this article. Many cruise ship waiters are entertainers in their own right. However, you should not count on blind luck to get hooked up with a stellar personality performer. Just ask, beg or bribe the maitre d' to seat you with Mr. Personality, Mr. Close-Up Magician or the Joker. How to get the best table. So, having identified the best table as the one with the most colorful dining companions and or the most entertaining waiter, what's the process for finding this needle in a haystack? Look for the table with the most empty wine bottles, the one to where the sommelier keeps gravitating, the one where people are turned sideways in their chairs talking to each other, not staring straight ahead silently shoveling food into their mouths. And, if you are fortunate enough to see otherwise sophisticated looking people balancing silverware on their noses, especially on formal night. Bingo! Tip the maitre d' a hundred bucks if necessary to get a seat at that table. For well over a decade we have been told to turn off all cell phones and never turn them on or attempt to make a phone call while in flight. The reasons we have been told for this request often comes back that the signal will interfere with the computers on the plane and cause it to crash immediately, or that there is simply no signal up there, or even that if there was signal all the electronics on the plane would make the connection impossible. However, we now know that several people took it upon themselves to try their cellular phones to say goodbye to their loved ones when they realized they were not going to see them again on September 11. There were dozens of phones making multiple calls all over the country and while the clarity of the calls are uncertain, many on the ground reported that they were able to stay on the phone for a long time and calls were not dropped from lost service. More food for thought on this concept, many airlines have telephones built into the seats. With the swipe of your credit card and about $5 per minute you can use their phones. But how do you get a connection? Will my cell phone work on a cruise ship? A few years back we were all told that our mobile phones would not work while at sea on a cruise ship during our water-based vacation. Research lately shows that this is not always the case. There are now some companies that have global satellite connections that make it possible to connect calls from at sea. Before attempting to connect a call from on board the cruise ship, you may want to contact your service provider to inquire about per minute rates and ship to shore connection fees that may apply to calls made while on board. It is fairly common that most islands have decent reception. However in some cases you could be calling from outside of the country which could encounter more connection fees. Before you try to use your cell phone, stop by your local phone retail center and ask a representative about the specifics for international calling. Although there are all sorts of great parts of Alaska to check out when on a cruise there will generally be two or three days during a cruise where the ship is at sea. Fortunately there are all sorts of cruise activities that are available. These options for Alaskan crews onboard entertainment range from sports activities to spa areas and even casinos on some boats. There are even shops and shows on these boats. Many boats will have sports activities. One of the most notable things people will see on a boat is that of a pool or other outdoor court area. Many different ships will have pools of all sorts of sizes ranging from an Olympic-size pool to a pool for kids. Basketball and volleyball courts, some of which can be outdoors, are also available on many ships. All sorts of fitness center activities are available too including exercise equipment, fitness classes and even a jogging track. Spa services are available on many Alaskan cruise ships. 
These are among the most popular cruise activities in that these offer all sorts of different relaxation activities. There are many different features that are available on these ships including acupuncture and massage therapy sessions. These can be popular so it helps to contact the Alaskan Cruise Liner for details before departure on scheduling an appointment. Some Alaskan cruise ships will have casinos. Many different popular groups offer full casinos on their ships with a variety of activities. These include slot machines, blackjack tables, roulette, craps and different types of poker tables. Many groups will offer lessons on how to play these games and in some cases tournaments are available. Shopping is another of the top Alaskan cruise activities in that many ships offer a variety of shops. These include beauty stores with fine fragrances, liquor stores and drug stores for convenience and even gourmet food stores. Some ships offer stores with jewelry and electronics products. All sorts of classes are offered on Alaskan cruise ships. All sorts of groups offer enrichment courses for a variety of things. These include wine education lectures, lectures on how to handle one's finances, computer skill classes and even golf clinics. For kids there are many activities to check out. These include skateboarding areas, arcade rooms, movie theaters and many other popular places. Child care services are available for parents too. Finally there are many different shows that are popular among these Alaskan crews on board entertainment options. All ships have different types of shows ranging from a dance hall with live bands with different themes, musical shows and even interactive game shows. There are a lot of reasons to take a cruise and a lot of different ways that you could cruise. Many people rush right into booking their cruise because they think that their choices are somewhat limited. They pick a cruise based on destination and excursions, but they completely leave out the fact that they will be spending over half of their time at a bare minimum on the ship. That is why choosing your cruise ship is so important when it comes time to choose your cruise. Here are some tips to help you pick the right ship. 1. What's on deck? Make sure that when you are looking at cruise ships that you know what kind of special amenities are available on board. Some of the new ships have some nice perks on board including rock climbing walls, giant screen TVs and surfing pools. 2. What's for dinner? Sure, most ships have fantastic foods but there is always some kind of variance in how and when dinner is served. Most ships have a set dinner time, perhaps two separate seatings and you can choose from either an early seating or a late seating. Some of my favorite cruise ships have liberal seating times. You dress and go eat dinner when you want. By keeping these few things in mind and doing your due homework by checking out the various cruise ships you will find that you enjoy your cruise much more. Sure, all roads do point in the same direction but make sure that you are on that road in the ship that fits you best. Darren James Leonard James Promotions.net